Hey everybody, this is Dr. Cummings from PLNU in San Diego, California. Uh, I want to talk to you for a few minutes in this video about eukaryotes. This course really doesn't dive too deep into the eukaryotic pathogens. Um, traditionally, an intro to micro course focuses on first bacteria and then secondarily viruses. But I want to make sure that you remember what eukaryotes are all about, how eukaryotes are distinct from the prokaryotes, particularly in their cell structure, their size, their genome. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, cell structure, size, genome. There's not time for me to break down every single organelle in the eukaryote. That would take a long time. And most of you have had some sort of an intro biology class before taking this, whether it's A&P or something along those lines. So as we talk about eukaryotes, you do the legwork to go back to your textbook, go back to notes from a previous course like A&P, and make sure you remember how eukaryotes work. So let's talk about cell structure and genome. Before we do that, I want you to <clears throat> have sort of a genetic or total genomic context of the eukaryotes, right? This is a, an example of a tree of life based on uh, DNA sequences. In the old days, we used to do these phylogenetic trees or a tree of life to cluster related organisms based on primarily what we could see in their structure, which works great for big things. It works really well, actually. Um, but the smaller you get, the harder that becomes, right? Because all bacteria essentially look the same. Uh, and they look just like archaea, essentially, and so there's no real distinguishing structures between them, etc. And so in the, the days of, of genome sequencing, we've been able to take DNA sequences, which ultimately are the foundation for those structural differences and biochemical differences that we were using before, and begin mapping them out using cluster analysis or dendrograms. And what we see is that um, one, there are basically three branches, three very large branches we call domains, and one of those branches is called the eukarya, and all of these, although they are, are in addition to being genetically closely related, uh, they also are all structurally closely related at the cellular level. This is where we find all of the, the eukaryotic cells, right? So all the animals, everything from puppies and bunnies to humans, are here in the eukaryotes, but also there's fungi, there's the plants, and then there's a, a wide range of really bizarre uh, organisms from slime molds to protozoa that kind of have their own branches coming off. And so humans have, we share cell structure and we share a fundamental genetic similarity to all the other animals, including the animals that cause infections. And so when we think about um, uh, infectious eukaryotes, we should be thinking about fungi, which have their own branch here. We should be thinking about protozoa, which are kind of scattered across this main branch. And we should be thinking about the helminths. The helminths are microscopic, or at least in some life cycle stage, they're microscopic worms that can cause infections. And they're up here in the animal section, very complex compared to the protozoa, which are single-celled, and the fungi, which can be single or multicellular. So we've got the eukarya domain that all has the eukaryotic cell structure. And then we have the bacterial domain and the archaeal domain, which are distinct branches, but they all share a prokaryotic cell structure. So make sure you can distinguish the eukaryotic cell structure from the prokaryotic cell structure. And you can see hopefully why, and hopefully it'll become even more apparent as we go through the course, why uh, distinguishing, say, a bacterial pathogen from a eukaryotic pathogen is extremely important. And it's also important to notice that there are no viruses on this tree of life because they don't follow the rules of living things. And so we don't have common genomic signatures to look at. Uh, we can look at viruses separately and see which viruses have diverged off which viruses, but they don't seem to share any sort of a, a common root with all the other living things, right? So if we think of viruses as non-living, um, they don't really have a place on this tree. And so again, very, very distinct. So keeping in mind that the bacteria are very distinct from the eukaryotic pathogens and the eukaryotic human hosts, and, and those are very distinct from viruses. Uh, and so we've got a, a wide range of organisms that we need to keep in mind as we talk about the world of microbiology. Now this is the only slide I'm going to show you on the eukaryotic cell and its genome. And so it's really going to be up to you to go back 
make a list and study what these different structures are. So you need to remember or relearn, remind yourself of, for example, what the nucleus and the nucleolus are. How are they physically built and what's their main role? What are cilia? And, and here's a common student error that I see and I'll just call it out now. Cilia are, are relatively complex structures associated with eukaryotes that have motility. Eukaryotes. Cilia are not found on the bacteria. Okay, so keep that in mind. Bacteria do not have cilia. They're more complex than that and so cilia are found on some uh, eukaryotes but not on the prokaryotes. Uh, inside the cell membrane, you've got cytoplasm where a lot of the metabolism is taking place. You have ribosomes, which are the, the protein-making structures. They're essentially organelles that aren't wrapped up in, uh, in membrane. The nucleus has an envelope, it has pores in it, and then the nuclear envelope extends into the endoplasmic reticulum. The rough ER is studded with ribosomes, the smooth ER does not have any ribosomes on it, and those two regions of the ER have different functions. Make sure you review that. Uh, many eukaryotes have lysosomes for digesting things. Uh, most of them have mitochondria. Most have centrioles, which are sort of a cytoskeletal organization centers to make sure that all the cytoskeletal filaments are organized properly. And they become especially important during cell division and separation of the chromosomes. There are vesicles for secretion, vesicles for, um, for um, uh, endocytosis as well. Most have a Golgi body for processing macromolecules like proteins. There are transport vesicles shuttling things around within the eukaryotic cell. We already talked about the rough and smooth ER and the cytoskeleton. Uh, if it's photosynthetic, it's also going to have chloroplasts in it. Make sure you work through all of these membrane-bound organelles and you remind yourselves how these work as compartments and that's really the key compartmentalized metabolism within a eukaryotic cell and because of the compartmentalization they tend to be much larger and more complex they divide more slowly because there's a lot more material to shuffle around uh, and then their genome is different uh, underneath I don't know if I can move this I can look at that um, the eukaryotic genome they typically have most eukaryotes almost all, I can't even think of an example right now of a eukaryote that doesn't have multiple chromosomes. And we're going to see that's in contrast to the prokaryotes that have single chromosomes typically. Their chromosomes are usually linear, so they have a start and a stop, whereas prokaryotic chromosomes are going to be circular. They are usually diploid, meaning that there's two versions, slight variations on each other, of each chromosome, which means there's two versions of every gene. They have a nucleus to contain their genome. And it turns out that the mitochondria and the chloroplasts also have their own small genomes. That's really fascinating. And so part of your human genome is actually found in your mitochondria. You don't have any chloroplasts. That would be really cool, but you don't. But part of your genome is found in your mitochondria. And the majority of it is found in the nucleus of each of your cells. But the mitochondria do carry some of their own genome. We're going to see that uh, all of these things are different from the prokaryotes in a later video. Let me give you a couple examples. A very simple genome would be yeast. A yeast is a single-celled fungal cell. Okay, think of like brewer's yeast or candida that causes yeast infections. A single cell uh, of a eukaryote that's found in that branch of fungi on that phylogenetic tree that we were looking at. This is a relatively simple eukaryotic genome and it consists of 12 million base pairs of A's and T's and C's and G's, just to be a tiny little yeast. Uh, on those 12 million base pairs, there's about 6,000 different genes. And if you think of a gene as a recipe for making a protein, and then the protein is what carries out the functions of the cells, there are 6,000 different genes, and so roughly 6,000 different proteins. And those 6,000 genes are spread out across 16 chromosomes. And that's just a very simple yeast genome. Human genome, not surprising, more complex because we're more complex than yeast. About 3 billion base pairs of DNA, about 23,000 genes or recipes for making proteins, and spread out across 46 chromosomes, 23 homologous pairs. Remember we said they're diploid? So 23 pairs that are nearly identical but not absolutely identical. We're going to see in a later video just how distinct both the structure 
and the genome of a eukaryotic cell is from the prokaryotic cells, the bacteria that we're so interested in. And then later in the semester when we get a chance to talk about the viruses, we're going to see that the viruses, all bets are off. None of these rules apply. None of the rules of any cellular life forms, in fact, apply to the viruses. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video with some take-home points. Okay, so let's review real quick. You do need to know the details, but I want to hit the kind of overview big picture and tie it all up for you. So eukaryotes, we saw, are on their own branch of the tree of life. They are distinct in a distinct domain where we've got the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya. And the eukaryotes, those that have this eukaryotic structure, are all in that domain eukarya. Uh, important for an infectious diseases class, important eukaryotes include humans, you and me, the host of pathogens, right, are eukaryotic. And then three main groups of eukaryotic pathogens are going to be fungi, which include the molds and the yeasts, protozoa, for example, giardia, that causes giardiasis, and helminths, which is a fancy word for the various infectious worms. So there are some important eukaryotes that come into play with human health, not, never mind the fact that humans are eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells, a real key difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes is that they have membrane-bound organelles that compartmentalize different key functions. So it's not all happening in the same general space. And then the eukaryotic genome is both very large and very complex compared to a prokaryotic genome. And we're going to see all that come into play before we know it. So review this as often as you need to. Have your book open next to you. Make sure all this jives and take the time to fill in those details with the eukaryotic cell structures and their individual functions.